So uh, we discussed uh, the poem, Tale of Custard the Dragon, and uh, today we uh, discuss once again the literary devices that are there. What is the message of the poem about the characters in this poem? And uh, yes, uh, how it is a ballad. I just, as I, when I started this poem, I told you all that uh, this poem, it is written in a style of a ballad. That is, it tells a story. And yes, it does gives us a message. So we've read the poem, The Tale of Custard the Dragon. What do you think is the message? What do you think is the message? Yes, students, what do you think is the message? Anyone? No one? So it is about, it's about courage, it's about bravery. Yes, it is not always brave, but when the occasion, when the need arises, isn't it? Right, so that is when we need to be, show our bravery, yes. And uh, we, we don't have to go on telling every day that I am so big and brave and I can do this and that. But our bravery is only evident when the need or when the opportunity or when there is a problem, then we have to show our strength and we have to show our courage. And if each one of us is brave, that is there, we all have that courage. But when are we courageous enough? When somebody asks for our help, when someone is in a difficult situation, when we need to take care of ourselves, others, so that is one thing that we do know. Okay. Now, among these characters, yes, who were Belinda's pets? How many pets did Belinda have? So Belinda herself was a brave girl, isn't it? She was uh, as full as a barrel full of bears. This is a simile for her that is used that she's there. Like uh, so active, so uh, yes, so she had, uh, right, Harshad, yes, so we should never underestimate anyone. Very good, right? We should never. And uh, even the, you know, the most humblest, the most shy person can be the most bravest person because it is how you manage the situation, how you take control of the situation. Yes, so what were Belinda's pets? She had a dragon, she had a kitten, mouse and a dog isn't it right and the names custard ink blink and mustard and uh, see very rhyming names she has kept and uh, yes among the pets the dragon was there the largest uh, and uh, very typical but what was there so untypical about the dragon that he was very timid and was very scared he would cry to be inside his cage he did not want to go outside like uh, maybe like another dragon there, just, uh, you know, like uh, showing his strength and uh, the fire and the smoke and all. So he was not like that. And a problem came one day. What was that? What was the problem? What happened one day? Who, who, who came to their house? Who came to the house? Yes. Who came to the house? On, this is so easy. Who's going to give me the answer? Who came? A pirate it came, right? And a pirate, as he came and he uh, was climbing, and uh, yes, so he was armed uh, and he had a uh, pistol in both the hands, he had a knife held between his teeth, and he came with the intention of robbing, right? Yes, of hurting them. But what happened at, uh, at that time? So yeah, Belinda was scared and she saw this pirate climb, climbing through the window. And what happened to her pets? What did Ink do? Blink do? What did Mustard do? What did Custard do? They all, yes, except for Custard, they all just ran away. They disappeared. Ink, it seemed as if just like Ink just went or, or trickled away. And uh, yes, uh, the kitten also disappeared. Uh, the mouse just went in the hole. Right, everybody just went off and except for custard. He faced the pirate and he attacked the pirate just like a bird attacks the, on the worm. And uh, in, in a flash, in a second, what happened was that, uh, yes, custard was able to just uh, gobble up the pilot, uh, sorry, pirate, sorry, and Belinda was safe. 
and after that you know he did a, a, such a big act he did not wait for applause he did not wait for clapping or appreciation and he just went back into his cage again the other pets they came out and they started justifying oh i am a very brave person i could have done this but i got so scared i got so worried i got so confused didn't know what to do isn't it right and yes in a difficult situation it is a presence of mind if we are able to think and uh, we are able to take control of the situation that is what makes us brave and no matter yes if we know someone is going to attack and we have a you know planned for it previously then only it might be helpful but on the spur of the moment instantaneously showing some kind of reaction so showing some kind of response it is it requires a great presence of mind so instantly you know like when we read about a chain snatching incidents or a robbery a theft and all and we hear about people who were so brave a person drowning jumped into the river saved that person right they ran after the snatcher okay a little things maybe was able to note down the details about the car number or the bike number all that things so that shows a presence of mind so in the difficult situations so this is a ballad it conveys a message it's told in a very rhyming rhythmic way and we loved reading it isn't it did you or not yes we did and this is learned from this poem okay so there is personification all the pets have been personified custard has been personified as someone who's there always you know crying and uh, a coward and wanted to hide and that's why his name is also custard right so ink blink and mustard everybody has all of them have been personified yes so let us just look at it so who are the characters in the poem list them with the pet names you can do this yes why did custard cry for a nice safe cage why did he cry for a nice safe cage because he did not like to be out in the open he did not uh, uh, want to be with the other animals and he was scared he just felt comfortable when he was in the cage and why is the dragon called the cowardly dragon because he is unlike other dragons and yes he could breathe fire and there was a smoke out of his nose it was like that but he was in in uh, otherwise he was absolutely different from the other dragons okay so he was not like them and so he was called a coward he is called the cowardly dragon and that is why belinda named him custard and it's also very unusual for belinda to have a very unusual pet so dragons are very uncommon pets isn't it right so belinda tickled him she tickled him unmerciful that means belinda is very strong belinda is very brave she had the courage to tickle the dragon but in this case the dragon was custard who was a cowardly dragon she tickled him she tickled him unmerciful without any pity and uh, making him uncomfortable and he did not like it at all and uh, he just wanted to go and hide in his cage right so why did she tickle him why because she would make fun of him because he was a coward he would feel uncomfortable the poet has employed many poetic devices yes so this is one poet uh, device that we had discussed the other day it is anomatopoeia right that is the words which resemble the sound the clash and uh, yes the jangling all these here smashed these words which are similar to sound words okay they are called as onomatopoeia or onomatopoeia as you want to call it so people pronounce it either way clashed his tail like iron in a dungeon yes there is a simile over here there is also the sound over here so can you list more such can you, what about the similes there are so many similes over here that you can underline and you can find can you underline them or should we do them together we i'll just go through the poem and we'll i have told you to underline side by side did you do it have you underlined yes have you underlined you should right so please note down where there is a simile Percival, note that down also. That is also an important device. Illusion. When you refer, 
to one person you know like you like you talk about uh, someone who wants to play cricket okay what are you are the sachin tendulkar isn't it a reference to one particular person so he was called percival why percival a brave person but they used to make fun of him and they used to tease him in that way okay allusion a double l u s i o n write that for yes i've written it on the blackboard also now read stanza 3 again to know how the poet describes the appearance of the dragon can you tell me what the dragon looked like what did the dragon look like yes what did the dragon look like the dragon was big and it had spikes the scales on his belly and had claws right it was a really or truly or dragon it was a dragon and the poet has used that refrain what is it i i told you yes we have to remember refrain here has been used isn't it similarly we have discussed personification is there there is onomatopoeia there right in this poem okay so the uh, dragon what did it look like looked very big and had the spikes on the back and the scales had the claws it would breathe fire smoke coming out of his nose okay right now can you find out the rhyme scheme of two or three stanzas of the poem so let's just look back see this is why i have to keep on coming the back again and again because i have to share the where is the refrain okay yes thank god somebody asked me a question am i happy of course look at this and really or oh, truly or oh, little pet dragon really or oh, truly or oh, repetition isn't it yes so this is a refrain right now can you look at these first three stanzas can we do the rhyme scheme for it belinda lived in a yes house mouse wagon dragon house mouse a a wagon dragon b b ink blink mustard custard a a b b teeth underneath nose toes a a b b isn't it so there is a very what uh, similar rhyme scheme there's a uniform rhyme scheme throughout it is a a b b or c c d d whatever you want to say it right so yes yeah, so we give the similar rhyming words the same alphabet that is how you do the rhyme scheme okay now here look at let's see just go to the questions and then i'll come to the literary devices writers use words to give us a picture or image without actually saying what they mean can you trace some images used in the poem what are the images used here image of the dragon how the dragon has been described then what about the pirate yes how the pirate came pistol in his left hand pistol in his right and he held in his teeth a cutlass bright his beard was black one leg was wood it was clear that the pirate meant no good the image of the pirate yes the image of uh, the dragon in the cage crying but custard cried for a nice safe cage about the bravery and the big contrast here so images have been used so these are word uh, play here it is there now do you find the tale of custard the dragon is it a serious or a light hearted poem what is it is 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 it light hearted or is it a serious one it is light hearted but it does convey a message isn't it yes so in a very nice easy way we enjoy listening to it we enjoy reading it we love it uh, here because it is told in a very rhythmic uh, rhyming poetic manner but it conveys an important message right it's about appearances it's about courage it's about bravery right yes now the poem in ballad form tells a story have you come across any such modern song or lyric that tells a story so have you come across see these are these are some of the features it's a narrative there are characters there's a strong rhythm and rhyme it has a refrain and it is into verses or stanzas 
all of you please look at it and uh, yes uh, more than extracts now i want you to have understandings just a minute of this look at this now please identify the devices in these stanzas identify <coughs> Sorry. Quickly, let us do the literary devices. Look at the first time. So all of you, let's do it together hurriedly, hurriedly, and uh, whatever will be left, I, I think, so I'll give it to you as homework. What is the device over here? Belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little gray mouse. Is there a repetition here? Is there a repetition? Which word? Little, little, little. Is there alliteration? Belinda lived in a little white house. So there is a literature. When you speak, that sound is repeated, isn't it? Look at this one. Is there a, and, and? And uh, and uh, what is that? What is this? What do you call this? Come on, you know it. Anaphora. Do you remember? Yes. Note this down, please. Yes. So let's see who's the brave person who's replied. Yeah, very good. Very intelligent person. I'm getting replies from. Very good, Amritpal, and very good, Jasmine. Okay. Then next comes. Here, you know, and really, truly, little pet dragon. What is the real word over here? And really, truly, little pet dragon. These are the real words. But the poet has changed its spelling. We call it poetic liberty or the poetic license. So as the poets, they are, yes, uh, very nice. So they are at the liberty to change the spelling because they want the rhyming scheme. They want the, the writing a ballad and in a ballad rhyme rhythm, very important. Okay, now the name of the little black kitten was Ink. The little gray mouse, she called him Blink. The little yellow dog was sharp as mustard, sharp as mustard. What is here? Tell me, hurry up. What is here? Sharp as mustard? Simile, it's a comparison. And how do we identify? What is the quick way to identify a simile? The use of words like and as. Right, correct. Who got it correct? Who was able to identify it? Oh my God, I'm getting so many answers. But the dragon was a coward and she called him custard. Yes? Okay. Yeah, I know you all got it. I know you got it. Very good. Yes, because you got the word as and you were able to identify. Alliteration and simile, there are favorite devices, aren't they? Custer the dragon had big sharp teeth, spikes on top of him and scales underneath. Mouth like a fireplace, chimney for a nose. And really, truly old daggers on his toes. Mouth like a fireplace? Yes. And look at the spelling once again. Really, truly daggers on his toes. This is, these have been repeated. Yes, so it is a refrain. Once again, Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears. Barrel full of bears. As brave as a barrel full of bears. It is a simile also. We have alliteration also. An ink and blink chase lines down the stairs. Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage. But custard cried for a nice, safe cage. Right? Yes. So the qualities there, how they're behaving. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Simile, simile, simile. Now, Belinda tickled him. She tickled him unmerciful. Ink, blink, and mustard. They rudely called him Percival. They're making fun of him. Percival, who's Percival? A brave, mythological person. Right? Who are they comparing him to? They're making fun of him. But here we have a reference of this person. Percival. Illusion. A double L U S I O N. Write it down. They all sat laughing in the little red wagon. 
at the really or truly, truly or cowardly dragon, right? So yes, here they tickled him. She tickled him unmerciful. Without pity, she tickled him. And she, all of them teasing him. Look at this stanza. Belinda making fun of him. Belinda laughing at him, calling him a dragon. Sorry, cowardly dragon. And ink, blink, mustard, calling him names. And they're all laughing at him. So this stanza here, it shows the bad behavior, how bad they are, how much they tease him. Belinda giggled till she took the house. And Blink said, weak, which is giving for a mouse. Ink and mustard rudely asked his age, who are you? You're crying. When Custard cried for a nice safe cage, don't tease me, don't tickle me, I want to go and be in my cage. That is where Custard felt safe. Suddenly, suddenly, they heard a nasty sound. What is suddenly, suddenly here? Yeah? Yes, repetition. They heard a nasty sound and Mustard growled and all looked around. Meowch, cried Ink and Oof, cried Belinda, for there was a pirate climbing in the window. Once again, which spelling has been changed? Yes. What is Winda supposed to be actually? Winda is supposed to be window. But it has been changed once again to rhyme with Belinda. Yes. And uh, yes, so we have repetition over here. You were able to identify it. Very good. Pistol in his left hand, pistol in his right. And he held in his teeth. Cutlass, right? So he held would be alliteration, pistol, pistol. Yes, again, his beard was black, one leg was wood. It was clear that the pirate meant no good. So see the Im image over here. See how it has been visualized, right? Yes, and how the pirate, very dangerous looking, very scary looking. And a beard black, leg wood, and carrying a pistol and a knife, fully armed, very dangerous. Belinda peeled and she cried, help, help. What a contrast. What an irony. Right now they were all making fun. They were tickling. They were saying, we are so brave. But Master fled with a terrified yell. Ink trickled down to the bottom of the household. And little mouse blink, strategically mouse hold, mouse hold. What was blink? Blink was a mouse. And mouse, where do they live? In holes. What did the mouse do? Mouse hold. Isn't it? Right? So he went into the hole, disappeared over there. Up jumped custard, snorting like an engine. Like an engine? Simile. Clashed his tail like irons in a dungeon. Simile. And with a clatter and a clank and a jangling squirm. He went at the pirate like a robin at a worm. Lots of simile examples here. And here there is the sound that is onomatopoeia. The pirate gaped at Blinda's dragon. Oh my God, where did this dragon come from? And gulped some grog from his pocket flag on. He fired two bullets, but they didn't hit. And Custard gobbled him every bit. Right? Gobbling, ate him up. And yes, yeah, so the pirate was dead. Belinda, this rest we have all discussed, I, I think. So we've just finished with this, isn't it? Right? Yes. And how in this stanza, they all make excuses that, that why they were not as brave and why they could not come to Belinda's help because they got confused. But the real thing is the person who does not get confused, the person who has control of himself, shows presence of mind is the truly bravely courageous person. Any doubts, any questions you have, students, regarding the poem? No doubts? Okay, fine, good. 